if you can see my screen I believe everyone can see my screen if you can see my screen can I see a raise of hand if you can see my screen can I see a raise of hand all right great 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 thank you very much thank you I so much appreciate that thank you so much now let's get started now tonight we are going to be talking about cryptocurrency and um, as we all know cryptocurrency is the future of money and it's just where the world is driven to now the first thing you have to understand is that um, Bitcoin itself is where it all started and the blockchain technology is now disrupting the financial space so today we are going to be talking about the basis of cryptocurrency trading and we are going to be using one of the you know hundreds of exchanges in the world which is binance so we are going to be looking at the binance platform and i'm going to be you know intercepting the the class from the powerpoint to the binance interface and showing you what it is what to do how to trade how to buy bitcoin and all of that so let's get started like i said earlier ensure you have your pen and your paper pen things down write down your questions so that when it's time for q and a you can as well ask your question properly so my name is kunes on the paradise i'm the ceo of remy trade academy i base in port harcourt nigeria um, my personal mission is to accelerate um, africa transition into a sustainable developed economy by leveraging on you know the innovation in the crypto space and i have a good background in biochemistry forex i trade forex and stock trading and i'm also an, an a cryptopreneur so i am an enthusiast cryptopreneur you know educationist driving the adoption of blockchain and other cryptocurrency assets across africa now at the end of this event like i said earlier you'll be able to you know know what bitcoin is what cryptocurrencies are how blockchain works and several other use cases of um, blockchain and how to buy and sell cryptocurrencies with your local currency in fact that's the most important thing how you can use your naira to you know buy cryptocurrencies how you can use your naira to buy cryptocurrencies very very um, important i will show you how you can deposit your naira and use it to you know purchase some cryptos so let's uh, proceed So this is um, Binance, like I said earlier, this is Binance, and Binance is the world leading blockchain and cryptocurrency infrastructure provider with a financial product that includes the largest you know, digital assets exchange by volume. Now, it takes Binance only about you know, five months to become the world most largest exchange by volume. And it is trusted by millions of people across the world and Binance have dedicated its platform to you know increase the freedom of money for users and the futures are you know so 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 much you know unmatched to the portfolio of cryptocurrency products and its related um, offerings so Binance is the world leading cryptocurrency exchange before now before Binance came on board there were other you know exchanges like you talk about bitphoenix you could talk about bitrex you know gdax coinbase and all that but when binance came on board it actually overtook all those you know exchanges in a matter of five months so you can see that the exchange itself have you know a good leadership driven you know focus they are very focused and when you go to their their platform you will see that these people are actually trying so we are going to be using Binance as our point of discussion and where you can actually trade. Now, it's very important for you to know that the link I drop in the group, that's in the WhatsApp group, ensure you pass through that link and do your Binance registration. It's very important. For you to trade, 
pass through the link and do your registration and if you pass through the link you have 20 percent commission of your trading fee because if you're trading on binance you have to you know pay some fee so for you to pass through my link you have 20 percent commission given to you when you pass through my link so it's very important it's in the it's in the group whatsapp and i will also drop it in the description for those of you that will watch it you know on youtube you check in the description below and you also see the link as well so this is binance and um if you can see this is how it, it looks like and um, this is my account um this is my binance account and this is how the interface looks like on desktop that's if you're using the pc this is what you will see um most time it will be very you know complicated for beginners to you know see something like this and you know for you to understand what it's actually talking about so you need someone to explain and you know dissect what it is and what action you should take at what point and all that so that is what the class is all about so this is the binance interface let's proceed. let's proceed i hope everyone can hear me i believe you guys can hear me Please record, please, sir. Yeah, the video is recorded. Yeah, we can hear you. The video is recorded. Don't worry about that. The yes, video sir. is recorded. After now, you can check on my YouTube channel and then you watch the video over and over again. Thank you so much. So, now when we talk about trading, we all know that if you go to the market, either a local shop or anywhere in the world or in your local market, you want to buy something, there must be an exchange. You must you have to exchange your naira for that product or for that goods you want to buy that is a trade you've actually performed a trade so when you exchange your old pc for a new you know game console you have actually traded so we could say that um when you want to take a trade you actually pay for something or something is somebody is paying you for something so there is an exchange that is taking place taking place so when such thing occur we say that a trade have actually occurred and that process is called trading now the same principle also exists in the financial markets and you trade financial assets like stocks you trade apple stocks you know um, google stocks facebook stocks you know um, so many other stocks like amazon stocks we have bonds as well forex space like currencies options and cryptocurrency these are you know financial markets so don't worry much before the end of the, the training you will know how to trade cryptocurrency but for the purpose of this training we will be looking at um, stock trading bonds and forex pairs and all that we'll be focusing on cryptocurrency which is the new dimension where you know money is you know focusing to because it's actually disrupting the financial space now let's get ourselves acquainted with binance and what it is let's get ourselves acquainted with binance and what it is now understanding binance the first thing we're talking about is the market space the market space then we'll look at the other box and then we'll look at charts so let me go to my account like i said earlier i'll be going through the 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 presentation and then i'll go to the live charts that's the live account binance exchange to explain what it is for you so you understand very very well write down your question and sure you do that now the first thing is the chart now this is the chart as you can see bitcoin have rose um in the past let's say um one month bitcoin have you know skyrocketed to the upside right from when it was um this is this point is um ten thousand six hundred dollars and it has reached nine thousand four hundred dollar there about and now it's going down this is just a retracement okay now this is your chart now what this chart does is it gives you a historical um data of what bitcoin has done before and what is doing right now so with this data you can you know use to analyze you can use it to analyze and tell what bitcoin will do next so with the help of this chart you can predict the price of bitcoin that is what this chart does and anybody that looks at charts to take his decision we say that person is a chartist or that person focus on technical analysis we'll come to that as we proceed in the 
um, in, in, in the training. So this is your charts. And like I said earlier, it's used to predict the price of a financial asset or financial instrument. In this case, Bitcoin. Now, the next thing we're looking at is our market pairs, our market pairs. Now, our market pair, where can you find your market pair when you come to this platform? You go to this very area, you see BTC, USDT. Now, USDT is a stable coin, just like US dollar, okay? So it's equivalent to US dollar and we call, they are all stable coin. You can also see BUSD, you can see TUSD, all those ones are stable currencies or stable coin, okay? So these are market pairs. All right, so we have BNB. How do we know that this is a BNB pair? If you look at it, all everything here is BNB. Everything on the right is BNB. Why those ones here change? Okay, so this is called BNB markets. You have BTC market as well. If you look at everything on the, on the, on the right is BTC. Why this guy change? And we have altcoin markets, altcoins. Now, what are altcoins? Altcoins are any other coin aside btc any other coin aside btc is called alt coins why are they called alt coins because they are alternative coins they are alternative coin because btc is the first cryptocurrency that was ever created so take note of that so you can you know choose any pair here and we also have fiat markets so this is usdt we have nigeria naira somewhere here we have nigeria naira can find our Nigerian area here. Let me search for it. I say pair USDT NGN. So you see Nigerian area here as a pair as well. Now we have what you call the zone where you have the innovative zone, DeFi, POS and all that. So this is what you call market pair. Don't, don't forget market pair. Now, if, if when you look at it, you discover that they occur in pairs they occur in pairs. So if you go to BTC market and you see, you see this guy, you see A, A, V, E slash BTC. They are all in pairs. Now it's, you must know that in the financial space, currencies occur in pairs. They must occur in pairs. That's the only way you can exchange one for another. Okay. So if they don't occur in pairs, you cannot actually um, exchange one for another. Let's say, for example, you have BTC USDT. That means if you have BTC, you can convert your BTC to USDT. If you have USDT, you can convert your USDT to BTC. Okay. So what happens here is just, you know, series of, you know, exchanges that is um, conversion from one cryptocurrency to another. So that is um, market, you know, pair. Very important. So take note of that. We have the mark, the, the box, which you call the other box or the market order box. Now the market order box or the other box is what you are seeing here. Is what you are seeing here. That's the other box. Now this other box show you buy and sell. This is buy option. Let's say for example now my chart is on BTC USDT and my other box is here. It means if I place this buy, it means I want to buy bitcoin that's what it means i want to buy bitcoin if i place on sell it means i want to sell my bitcoin to usdt if i place on buy it means i want to use my usdt to buy bitcoin that's how it works so this is your other box very important now we have what to call the order book now what is the order book the order book is when you place an order your order will go to the order book when you place an order, your order will go to the order book and it will be merged together. So let's say trader A place an order to buy Bitcoin at $10,000, for example. And trader B place another order to buy Bitcoin at $10,500. Their orders will be filled in the order book. Now, if it is a sell, you will see it at the red option. If it is a buy, you see it on the blue option. I don't know where people are getting it. If it's a sell, that's if the person places an order to sell Bitcoin, it will be here, the red side. And if the person places an order to buy Bitcoin, it will be on the buy side. That is the green side, okay? So this is the order box. Now, when the price is being reached, 
that is it's just like when an agreement is being reached when you go to the local market to price for you know any items that is when an exchange actually take place okay so when the price is reached between a buyer and a seller it now match each other to give you what you call the trades so you have the trade here you see you see blue you, you see green and red you see green and red it means there is a matching going on in the other book very important take notes because the other book is very important now if you go advanced you can use only the other other book to you know predict what the price of bitcoin will be because the number of people buy and the number of sell the number of people selling can actually determine the, the movement of price using you know our, our common knowledge of demand and supply when it comes to economics and the financial space so it's very important so i've actually explained charts the market pair markets we have the box we have also the other book so take note of that is very very you know important and also keep your question now what is a market and a market pair now a market is very specific and it's where buyers and sellers comes together to trade a certain asset so when we're talking about a market pair we are you know looking at if you want to buy something what are you paying with and if you are selling something what are you getting so in this case in this case of bitcoin btc usd is a market why because if you are selling bitcoin here you are actually getting you know usdt and if you are buying usdt what you will have in return is bitcoin so it's a market you sell a bitcoin to usdt you use usdt to buy bitcoin so it's a market so this is so one person must be a buyer and the other person must be a seller so this is where the time of agreement is reached where you exchange bitcoin to usdt in this particular instance so take note of that is very important now let's talk about market pay very important so that you understand what i mean by market pay and you know market now let's say for example you have btc czar this is south african ram same thing with btc ngn btc nigerian naira we have the btc case and then btc usdt they are numerous when it comes to you know market pair so if you have btc czar as a pair then it means that the market for buying and selling bitcoin in you know rands that means you can use rand to buy bitcoin and you can sell your bitcoin to rand that's what it means so the market pair btc czar indicate that if you want to buy bitcoin you have to pay with rand just the same thing that occur in our local market that we do every day and if you want to you know sell bitcoin you will you know be paid in rands that's that just is very simple when you go to your grocery stores and you want to you know buy any groceries you have to exchange you know a money that's a, a fiat for that particular groceries and you'll be given the grocery and you you know go home with the grocery so that is exactly what happened you know in the cryptocurrency market the same thing with eta ngn users buy you know ethereum with naira and you can sell ethereum and you know be paid in naira as well so you can actually as well change this if you go to market and i can change this chart to btc ada which is a btc cardano this is cardano chart and what this means is i can use cardano to buy bitcoin and i can i can as well use bitcoin to buy cardano okay they must be in pair that's why i said that in the financial space currencies are actually traded in pairs so that you can exchange them from one to another so very important take note of that okay now let's move further now we have what we call types of orders in the financial space listing attentively is very important for you to listen and add to your knowledge so they can teach others remember this training is absolutely free and we are here tomorrow by 7 pm to conclude this section don't miss out very important now we have 
types of orders in the cryptocurrency space and also in other financial market like forex stocks and bond trading limit order now a limit order is an order you you place to buy or sell an asset at a specific price or a better price listen attentively it's an order you place to buy a particular asset at a specific price that means you are the one to specify the price you want to buy or sell your assets okay so this price is called the limit price that's the price you choose it's called the limit price and the limit buy that's the limit by order is the order that will execute at the limit price or lower that means if you place a limit buy it will execute at that price or lower what does that mean it means that if you want to let's say you want to buy something in the market you will be happy if you buy at that price you negotiated or at a lower price because it's already at your advantage if it is lower isn't it so the same thing in the case of uh, if you want to sell that's why i said here that why limit sell order will execute at a limit price or higher so let's say you take something to the market you want to sell it and then you you've already fixed your price but you get something higher than your price it's, it's good it's good you get something higher than your price it's something you know good everybody wants it everybody wants to sell at a higher price so when you place a limit sell order it will you know execute at that price or a price higher okay so when you are selling when you are setting a limit order you basically saying you are basically specifying the price you want to buy but not at a worse price now what is market market order market order is a price that you want to you know buy a, a currency or an asset at the market price now you don't have to specify because they will give you at the best market price and it's the fastest kind of order you can see in the financial markets so you are telling the exchange give me at the better price which is right now so we also call this the instant execution so market order equal to instant execution now we have another one called stop loss order now this is used to limit a trader's loss when it comes to trading now remember trading is not you know only juicy you can also experience losses but you can use the stop loss order to limit your losses in case the market is going against you so the purpose of the stop loss order is mainly to limit losses so every trader needs an invalidation point where if price cross a particular point you can say okay at this price my idea is wrong and that means i want to exit the market so let's say for example you you know buy bitcoin at um ten thousand five hundred dollars and you say okay if bitcoin cross below ten thousand i am not interested again please convert my bitcoin to usdt which is a stable coin i don't want to lose the value of my bitcoin anymore okay so that ten thousand is your invalidation point remember you buy it at ten thousand five hundred dollars okay so that if it drops to ten thousand it will automatically you know sell your bitcoin back to you know usdt which is a stable coin so that you don't lose anymore so the stop loss order is used to limit a trader's loss now let's look at the practical section of it so that you understand okay so now you have this limit order and market order and stop limit which is the stop loss order now the market order is you want to buy bitcoin let's let me change this chart this market to btc usdt usdt btc Okay, so BTC US. All right. Okay, so now if if I want to buy Bitcoin, I'm using market order. I'm saying I want to buy Bitcoin now, so I can just put the amount of Bitcoin I want to buy here. You can say one Bitcoin, which is about um, um current price of Bitcoin is sixteen thousand eight hundred, and you click 
buy once you click buy you've bought bitcoin it's as simple as that i think i don't have any bitcoin yeah i just have um, some usd which is about um two 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 three usd which is about um 223 dollars now that is how you buy once you click here you've bought bitcoin now when it comes to limit order now remember this price when you buy you are given you are being given at the market price which is this price this is the market price this price you are seeing here is the market price so if you click buy here you'll be given at this price here now if you are using a limit order let's say you believe you bitcoin will come to this price which is um 16577 16577 so i can go here and click 16 Five seven seven. I'm saying at this price is where I want to buy, and I want to buy zero point zero 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 seven Bitcoin. So if I place this order, this is about eleven, you know, USDT. If I place this order, my order will be executed. Now it will go to the order box as a buy order. So if I click on it. You see my order has been created now if i go down if i bring it down you see if you look at here you see limits you see buy it's not filled yet why because price have not come to that area if you look at my chart here you will see that there is a green line this green line is where my order is so when price will move to this green line that is when this order will be executed if price does not come to this point it will never be executed and it will remain active until i come and cancel it it's as simple as that so take note so limit order you are placing the trade you know at your own price you specify it i want to buy at this price the same thing when you want to place a limit sell the same thing if you want to sell bitcoin you can as well you know if you believe bitcoin is going to hit twenty thousand dollars you can you know set your sell limit at twenty thousand dollars and go to anyone to go when price comes to that twenty thousand dollars it will automatically execute for you and sell your bitcoin back to usdt that is how you know limit order works so since price have not come to this area i can come here and cancel my my order once i cancel my cancel my order you see my order has been you know cancelled and my usdt is back to my account so it's as simple as that that is how you place limit order now the last one is stop limit that is stop loss now what is it used for like i said it's used to limit a trader's loss on a particular you know position how does it work now let's say for example you've analyzed this chart and you believe at this point if bitcoin cross this point it's still going to go down and you have bitcoin already you believe that if bitcoin goes down from this point it's going to go down and you want to buy bitcoin at this price listen attentively because some persons don't understand how to use stop limit order i want to explain here although there's a video in my channel that explain only types of orders i will drop the link in the description so that you see that out okay now let's say you want to buy bitcoin at this price which is um sixteen thousand ninety dollars now this is the point you want to buy bitcoin You've already placed this order together with this at the same time. So what happened is at this price is the limit buy. Now, when price comes to this point, it will execute a buy order for you. So you now buy Bitcoin. Now, at this point, you are expecting the price to go up because this is where you buy Bitcoin. Now, should in case price comes down and hit this, you are saying at this price which is 15616 the exchange should sell for you because at this price you believe it if it cross this point bitcoin is going to go down and it's going to be a loss for you so you don't want to lose anymore so that if bitcoin goes down below this point you are going to lose the difference between your limits and your stop okay so you now use this price which is 16007 as your limit why you use the second line here which is 15588 as your stop so that when price come to this point it will stop you out now what happened there is this when price come to this point the first line here 
which is 16062, you buy Bitcoin. You are expecting price to go up immediately you buy. Now, if paraventure price does not go up and it's yet here, the, the exchange should sell BTC into USDT for you because you believe from your analysis that at this point, if Bitcoin goes down below this point, it's still going to go down, which will result to series of losses. Okay, so you will now, you know, sell your Bitcoin at this price. So that is how you use your, you know, stop limit order. It's very, very, you know, simple. So let's proceed further now. Technical versus fundamental analysis. Now, technical analysis, you are using, you know, historical price pattern trends and all that to predict what the market will do next. And these include charts. You use indicators, technical indicators and trend lines. So when you do all those things, we say you are a technical analyst. Now, fundamental analysis, you are looking at the factors that, you know, affect the underlying asset, for example, Bitcoin. There are factors that appraise the price of Bitcoin, like BTC hash rates, the number of minings and, and all that. They all affect, you know, Bitcoin price. Now, for BTC, it also includes the number of addresses and also hash rate. I've talked about that and trading volumes. These are fundamental analysis. So if you're looking at factors that affect a particular cryptocurrency asset, you look at addresses, hash rates, trading volumes, these are fundamental analysis. But when you are using historical price action, that is what price have done before from your chart, as I shown you in the BTC USDT chart, or you're using indicator trend lines, it means you are doing technical analysis. In, the, in this section, we'll be focusing on technical analysis in the next slide. So let's proceed. Now, what is technical analysis? Technical analysis mainly uses these three tools. Number one, we have the candlestick charts. We have the trend lines and support resistance and all that. And we also have technical indicators. Now, I'll be showing you how to use these three technical ind indicators to actually use it to, you know, trade the financial markets. In this case, cryptocurrency market. So let's go further. What is candlestick charts? Now a candlestick chart is made up of four data. So we have the high, low, open, close, and this is referred to the OHLC values. It's very important. And the opening and the close are the first and the last recorded price for the given time frame. I will show you practically. Don't worry about that. Then why the low and the high are the highest and the lowest recorded prices respectively now the candlestick chart as we are seeing here was discovered by the japanese rice trader in the you know 17th century which was later modified in the 20th century by charles dow it's very important for you to give um, kudos to this guy he did a nice and wonderful job to modify the candlestick to what we are using now because before traders were using line charts which does not give enough information to analyze you know the chart and know what the price is doing at that moment so candlestick chart analyze uh, analysis is one of the most common way to you know predict the price of bitcoin market or cryptocurrency markets using technical analysis so let me show you what that means now this is candlestick chart this is candlestick chart as you can see let me um broaden a little bit so that you guys can see it clearly now this is a candlestick chart i want to explain a lot of things okay now let me put it on a wider screen mode so that you see it clearly okay great great now this is a candlestick chart now the green ones are bullish candles take note the green ones are bullish candle where the red ones are bearish candle very important now remember Candlestick differs depending on the time frame. So I can put it on W1. This is D1. D1 means one day chart, which means each of these candles is forming one day. Like this one forming now is formed today. Okay, which is 27th um, of um, November 2020. And if I put it on one week, it means each of these candles that you are seeing right now forms in one week time. At the expiration of one week, another candle will now form. The same thing happens when you go to one minute. 15 minutes and all that including one hour and all that so what that means is this if i put it on one day chart 
If I put it on one day chart, it means each of these candles is forming one day. And then um, if you look at it very well, like I said earlier, this is a green candle, which is a bullish candle. The red ones are bearish candle. Now, what happened in this financial space is just a fight between the bulls and the bears. I believe you know those two animals. So they use the two animals to, you know, describe what is happening between buyers and sellers in the financial space. Now, if you look at the candlestick variable, you see this high from here where you see the shadow to this point is called the body of the candle. The same thing happens to these red ones. From here to this point is called the body of the candle. Why this small line on top is called the T. You can call it the T. You can only call it the week or the shadow. Three things. T, shadow or week is the same thing. Okay. Now, this is the lowest price. This is lowest price, sorry. Where the price comes to before closing at this point. This is the highest price. This is the opening price when it comes to bearish candle. I repeat again. If it's a bearish candle, this is at the opening price. This is the closing price. This is the lowest price. This is the highest price for this candle. When it comes to a bullish candle, we have the opening price here. We have the closing price here. We have the lowest price here and the highest price here. So you must understand these four things that explain the candlestick infrastructure so that you get you know what it what it is when using the candlestick chart very important now trend lines now trend lines are used to predict you know patterns or the behavior of a particular you know market so i can use that to tell where price will move to and how you will take your decision when price approach your trend line so Trend lines are widely used to by both, you know, both technical and fundamental traders. And they are lines that connect certain points that is data on your chart. And this data is price. So some traders may draw their trend line, you know, differently. Some may use also little like um, indicators and some may use also momentum indicators. But the main idea behind trend line is that it's a visualized certain aspect of price action. And as a trader, you must actually, you know, know how to draw your trend line perfectly. So if you can see my screen, this pattern, this particular one is a good way to draw trend line. This one is the wrong way to draw trend line because if you draw trend line like this, it means you are wrong. If you draw it like this, you are correct. If you can see it here, you see that it's from one point to another without touching or crossing the candle. If you look at this point, it actually cross here. So this line is supposed to be shift to this end so that it can give a perfect trend line now let me go to my screen to explain now if you look at this very well the first thing you have to do before you can trade any markets is to understand the structure of the market now we're talking about market structure we are looking at is it the, is the market trending up is it going down is it trending sideways although we are not you know going to that today that should be for advanced students those that want to take it more further okay now if you look at this you can actually draw your trend line how do you draw your trend line like i said earlier you go here pick your trend line and you draw it out that's the best way for you to draw your trend line okay you draw it from one point to the other to this other point if you can see market touch here once from this point one two three four so this is a valid trend line. Now, for a, va for a trend line to be valid, it must touch at least two points. The third point is a confirmation for you. Now, why are we using trend line? It means that since price have been touching this trend line and the bouncing up, it means if this price should crash down to this trend line, it will bounce back up because price have been obeying this trend line in the past. That's what it means. Very, very simple if you go to the h4 chart which is one of my lovely chart i love the h4 very well because it gives me what i want now you can as well draw a trend line on the h4 chart you can see a pretty good trend line here look at it now you see that price is obeying this trend line you see it touched from this point the second point third point and 
where price is right now rejecting is the point where this trend line was drawn that i just then draw the trend line right now that means the trend line is very valid it means that price will reject as it's rejecting here right now go up and they go up like that or come back and retest the gate so trend line is only valid when two points it is met connect it like i did here and then watch when price approach that particular you know line again and then you you know know what to do that's very important so that's trend line. i believe you know how to draw trend line from this particular example take note of that so that is how to draw trend line now the other thing we're talking about is resistance and support level now this is the a the most widely discussed concepts and as a trader or as a beginner trader you must understand what resistance and support level is all about is very important so resistance means a level where price find a ceiling that is it find resistance the area where price is being resisted so at that level area they are you know a lot of suppliers that is sellers there that will push the market right down now support is where you know price find a significant demand and price start rising so you consider support as a floor where buyers push you know the market to the upside or price to the upside so as you can see here this line is a resistance area why here it's a, support, it's a support area so if you i go to my chart here you can see let me go to the d1 all right so we can draw a lot of um resistance line here if you look at this, this is a support line where price find some sort of um support before it actually goes up then if you look at here we have resistance here price was resisted here and then after it breaks and move up retest and go up so resistance is where price find you know ceiling before it comes back down and support is where it find floor that raises the market up or price up so resistance and support level is what you should not take lightly put it into consideration now the next one is we'll be looking at few technical indicators few technical indicators remember to set down your question because anyone from now will be ent entering q and a so that you ask your question properly so the first indicator we're talking about here is relative strength index which is rsi now the rsi is an oscillator that you know gives momentum it's an oscillator that predicts the momentum of the market and it actually uses oversold and overbought condition in the market so let me use my chart to show you rsi so you go here technical indicator and you find relatives rsi relative strength index so once i do that you see it is on my chart right now now the most thing you have to understand when using this is that it have two points that's very important we have the oversold point and the overbought point now when market cross when this line cross this level to this point that is from 70 to 100 is called overbought why from 30 from 30 year to zero is oversold now what happened when market gets to overbought is the market comes down if you look at it very well when market was at overbought here you see the chart was dangling around here and later come down before it consolidates and then move up now when market comes to oversold let me check an area where market comes to oversold okay if you see here if you look at here very well market come to oversold condition look at what the market was doing here after the oversold it means that sellers has been selling for a long time and there is no no much sellers again in the market so the market is going to go to the upside that is buyers will not take control that's what it means so at this point market starts going up and if you look at the chart it starts to go up so the best time to buy 
is when the market is at oversold and it should show you a sign of moving out of the oversold condition take note when you should buy is when market is coming out of oversold condition so you are triggering your trade around this level that this area the same thing when it comes to buy okay so at this point market was already overbought so it means that people were buying for a long time and sellers will take control so when market is going down as it's going down you look at your candlestick market start going down this is the right time to actually you know place your sell order for you to sell the market so that's rsi in the summary rsi predicts the strength of the market using oversold and overbought condition i said at overbought condition you sell why at oversold condition you buy the market so that's very important now the next thing we're looking at is moving averages now the moving average is a smart um smoother price action that uh, make it easy to spot market trend so you use the moving average to predict the market trend that means if you don't want to use your trend line you can as, as well use the moving average as you are to to predict the trend of the market that means either the market is going down or up remember you can't use the moving average if the market is moving sideways you can't use it so they lack predictive qualities in other words they are lagging indicators what does that mean it means that you cannot actually use the moving average to predict you know the price of the market you can only use it to you know support your trade in the case of defining the the type of market that is is it moving upward or downward so moving average so the moving average will just be placed on our chart you can place as multiple moving average as you like so the main purpose of the moving average is that when it's on a downtrend when it's on a downtrend like in this case it serves as a resistance like this is a resistance area resistance area resistance area so where you see the moving average cross like this in the case of the market going down it serves as a resistance in the case of the market going up it serves as a support to the market if you look at here the market was going up straight and it was in line with the moving average okay so it tells you the trend of the market very very important don't forget it so the moving average is used to predict the market as well so take note of that but you can actually use it to tell when to buy now and when to sell now in the case of using you know the rsi the next indicator is the bollinger band now the bollinger band was discovered by a man called john bollinger in the year you know 1980s and it uses a a simple moving average which is the middle one here is called the simple moving average and the upper line here is called the upper band why the lower band here is called the lower band that's the lower line lower band upper line upper band the middle line moving average is very simple now the middle line which is the moving average is a standard deviation from these two line that is the upper band and the lower band that in this case you can as well you know and um, change your 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 settings from default and put it like two standard deviation from the middle band to the upper band two standard deviation from the middle band to the lower band anyone you like you can as well you know manipulate your you know your moving average sorry your bollinger band is very important now you can leave it at default setting it's advisable as a beginner trader just leave your bollinger band at default setting leave it at default setting and you know use it to trade so the most important thing you have to note about the bollinger band is that it's a volatility indicator it shows you where volatility increases and where volatility decreases now the place where the bollinger band dilates that is move apart from each other is where there is high volatility and the place where it squeeze that is comes together like in this case it's where there is low volatility or decrease in volatility now if i go to my chart and i let me delete um okay let me delete some of this guy as well
All right. So I can go to indicator. I bring the Bollinger Band. So it's already on my chart. So you see the place where you have low volatility. You see the band come close together. In this point, this particular point is what we call the Bollinger Quiz in the market. Now what you are looking at to enter your trade here is a breakout out of this point. Once the market breaks out of this point, it's a good time to enter. Now if you enter immediately after the breakout, at this level, if you enter immediately after the breakout, it means you are aggressive. Now in trading, we have two types of traders, aggressive traders and conservative traders. Aggressive traders enter immediately after the breakout, while conservative traders will wait for the market to retest this particular level. That's this line that I just draw right now before they will now enter on the move to the upside. That is conservative trading. Either way, it's not bad. Either way, it's not bad because if you are, if you are aggressive, the market can just shoot up without touching this level again. That is without a retest. Now, if you're also aggressive, the disadvantage is that it can just give you a false breakout and go back down. Now, if you are conservative, the advantage is when it retests, you are very sure that the market is going to go up. The disadvantage is it can just go up without retesting. So either way is, you know, good. But the most important thing you have to note about the Bollinger Band is that it's a volatility indicator. As you can see here, when price starts moving up drastically, you see the Bollinger Band dilates from each other. And the candlestick was being formed in the upper band. Now, if I go back and um, you also see when the market was going down, you see market going down and the Bollinger Band dilates from each other. That is, it's expand from each other. So you're looking to enter the market. If you're using the Bollinger Quiz strategy, you enter the market after the breakout of the quiz. Now, one of the important things you have to note is that in the case of a downtrend, the upper band serves as a resistance level. In the case of a downtrend, the upper band, which is this line, serves as resistance level. While in the case of an uptrend, the lower band, which is this band now, serves as support level. It supports the market. Now, in the case of sporadic, you know, um, upward trend, the middle band, which is this one, the middle line here, serve as support for the market to go up. Now, the same thing in the case of a sporadic move to the downside, the middle band serve as resistance. Take note of that, it's very important. Now, the way I'm just trying to go over everything, in our advanced course, you actually get everything step by step in details. Now, the next thing we're looking at is scalping. Now, who is a scalper? A scalper is someone that enter in and out of a position quickly. So they're looking to take a you non-snap-snap know, position, enter in and out of a position within minutes and seconds, using or taking advantage of price fluctuation. So in case you're using technical analysis and you're trying to predict price movement, and then you want to exploit the bid and the art, you know, price, by taking profit from it, then you are a scalper. You do that in short time. So the main thing you have to understand about scalping is that you are using the smaller time frame. Because on the smaller time frame, let's say, for example, five minutes, you will see how the charts will move faster. Okay? When you are using something like one day, it will be very dull. Okay? So if you are a scalper, you are looking at one minute chart, five minute chart, and 15 minutes chart. So you're looking to enter in and out of the position and take advantage of price fluctuations so that you can profit out of that price fluctuations. So that is that for scalping. It is also profitable. So if you are scalping, you are a scalper. That is what it means. And it is also profitable when you use that trading method. Another trading method is called day trading. Now, day trading means that you are actually, you know, staying on your screen of your computer or your smartphone or your desktop looking at the, you know, charts throughout the day. You know, those guys you see on Wall Street, that are CNN, you see them, you know, with a big, you know, high pad or see the, most of them on system. They are actually day traders. They are predicting the price of the market tick advantage of price fluctuation during the day and they will be sitting seated there all through the day now 
the day trading strategy involves in exiting and entering the market within you know the same day is called day trading and if you are if you are day trading you are a day trader if you are day trading you are a day trader now cryptocurrency markets as you probably notice is um it's open all around the clock so that means there is no time for you to say okay this time the market will not be open just like the forest market that closed today which is friday and other stock you know exchanges like new york stock exchange london stock exchange that close during weekend days the cryptocurrency market is different it's 24 hour that means you can trade anytime you like even in the night so in day trading you probably you know rely on technical analysis to determine the price of an asset and you profit within that short time but the most important thing is that you are staying on your computer all through the day predicting the price of the market taking advantage of price fluctuation so for day trading you are looking at 15 minutes charts 30 minute chart, one hour chart to predict the price of the market so you can take advantage of price fluctuation. As you can see, the price of Bitcoin today is like this. So people that actually know how to trade on margin will have made a little profit. Okay, from this point to this point is massive profit if you are using margin trading. That's if you short this market from here to this point, you should be in massive money. That is what? margin trading this is sports so let's proceed now the next one we'll be looking at is um swing trading now swing trading works with larger time frame horizons it's very simple for you to define a swing trader and a day trader now their position are usually held over a couple of days sometimes weeks and months they don't bother about you know price fluctuations and most people that look at or that do this type of trading is investors they don't bother much about fluctuation in prices okay they've actually view the long term and said okay i am going to leave this trade for a very long term so they allow the trade to run for a long time so they don't bother about the fluctuation of prices that occur now most time they use fundamental analysis of the underlying assets to determine where the trade will go next so they don't stress their self they don't stay on the computer throughout the day and they don't do a lot of screen work so most time they use the four hours charts and the one day charts that's what you know swing traders use now why are they called swing traders is because they take the swings of the market now what where are swing points these are swing point. This is swing point. Market goes up, come down. It forms a swing. It goes up again, come down. It forms a swing. It goes up again, come down. It swing. It goes up again. These are swing points. So this is where they enter the trades. So market move from here to this point, comes down. It moves again. This is swing point. So this is where swing trader is looking to enter on the larger time frame. The same thing happens all over the charts. So at this point where you see the market move down, up, curve, and like that, they are all swing points in the markets. So take note of that. It's very important. Now, it's time for you to, you know, get your question ready. But before you get your question ready, I want to show you how to deposit with your Naira. How to deposit with your Naira, very important. So that as we end the class, you can do it practically or do it practically with me right now. How to deposit with your Naira so that you can buy cryptocurrency with your Naira. Okay, now let's go. Let's say, for example, you want to deposit with your Naira. You actually go to bank deposit. But what you have to do is you must register through the link. After the registration, ensure you verify your account. Very important. You go to bank deposit you click on bank deposit once i click on bank deposit i have to make my app ready so i can do the transfer here you see it and it will reflect as i wait for it to reflect i'll be taking your questions as well so what i will do here is i want to deposit naira very important now you have to choose fiat this is crypto i have to choose fiat 
But okay, before I go there, let's say for example, you want to deposit Bitcoin. See deposit, fiat, Bitcoin. You can choose any coin from here that you want to deposit. What you will send person that want to send you Bitcoin is this address. You copy this address and send to the person that want to send you Bitcoin and it will reflect in your BTC wallet. Very important. Now, if you want to receive Bitcoin, you go to withdraw. But here yeah, I'm talking about deposit. So let's deposit fiat, which is our Naira. It's very easy and simple. What you do is ensure it's on fiat. Nigeria Naira should be choose. There are other you know, currencies here. Then bank transfer. Then let's say let me deposit um, as little as 8,000 Naira. Now, Binance will charge you 150 Naira for fee Why this will reflect in your account. So for the purpose of this training, I will transfer or deposit um, 8,000 Naira into Binance right now so that you see it reflects. So what I will do is I will co click on continue. I've done this over and over again if I show you my my chart. Now, what I will do is I will send this money to this bank. Okay? I will send this money to this bank, this exact amount to this account number. It's very important. So if I do that right now, I have to choose the bank, Ruby's bank. Just give me a little time, Ruby's microfinance bank. Then I take the account number 13594760642. Okay, Binance Holding Limited. Then I'm transferring 8,000 Naira to this account. Once I Now, what you do is once you've done the transfer, you click on I have made this transfer. For me, I have done the transfer right now. So I'll click I have made this transfer. Now you allow it to complete, you know, five minutes and you go and you come and check it. Go and check your wallet. It will reflect automatically. All you need to do, follow the link, do your registration. After the registration, ensure you follow um the procedure in the group to do a verification ensure you do a verification before you deposit so once the five minutes got elapsed it will reflect my eight thousand naira which they will charge 150 naira from it will reflect in my account and then i'm good to go i can now convert my btc to um my deposit which is naira now to um btc as you can see, it has reflects already. So let me give them, you know, good review. This. Okay, as you can see here, yeah, it's 7, 8, 50 successful. I have successfully deposited my Naira into my account. So what do you do with the Naira? You go back to your trades go to advance as you can see here if you look at here if i click on market if i go to and click on market here and i click on btc ngn if i click on btc ngn you see my bit my naira will reflect here now, if you look at this very point, you see my 7,855 Naira reflect here that I just deposited now, now. So, it's a big opportunity for you that you see someone that wants to buy Bitcoin, you can charge the person higher. Come here and buy Bitcoin for the person and change. Remember, you still have to consider the transaction fee for sending the person Bitcoin into your calculation if you're charging the person. It's also a business opportunity for 
most of us that want to actually you know do transactions so that is how you can so here if i want to buy bitcoin here i can simply put my eight thousand naira can put my eight thousand naira you see the amount okay let me put it on market order i want to buy instantly and then i move this 100 percent i want to use my entire you know my entire money to buy bitcoin so i can just click buy okay i can just click buy now if i want to place this order now with a limit order i can then go here and change this value to three and then use the entire money here and click buy so my order will be executed as a limit order if you go here you see my order is not filled yet but if price come to this level it will be executed you can see see it's here when price come to this level it will be executed and i believe price will still go back up so that's how you buy bitcoin so i will cancel this order and my naira will return it's as simple as that so if i want to actually buy bitcoin i can use my market order and then i will put the entire amount which is equivalent to 0 0.000094 nine four zero bitcoin and i click buy once i click buy my order is filled immediately i have two naira and i have 0 0.0000941 btc that's how you buy bitcoin now ensure you do a trade practice make perfect don't just you know get the knowledge for nothing now one of the most important thing you have to note is i will not just leave you alone here to you know struggle in the market because it's not easy for beginners i'm here to help you out so ensure in the group go back in the group ask your question when necessary but i am given time for q and a right now so that you can ask your question immediately so you can unmute yourself and ask question accordingly and we are going to take quick q and a for just um, 15 minutes before we end the class so unmute yourself and ask your question while i explain Hello, great, sir. Yeah, evening, evening. Thank you. Thank you for the lecture. Um, I want to know in during your um trend line, is there any specific point that you can start drawing or resistance or support? Is there a specific line point that you can start drawing from? Yes. Or anything? yes it's a specific point you must you are the one to determine a specific point you will draw your trend line from okay okay you have to determine the point you want to draw your trend line from but the idea is that it should not cross like you can draw a trend line from here okay okay yeah to this point you All can right. see it does not cut across any other charts now, if you draw it like this, if you draw it like this, <coughs> you're actually wrong. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, so you have to pick out a specific point and draw it from one to two. That has two points must be identified. Connect those two points together and mark the line. Okay, if you should come uh, up front here, I, exactly where you're pointing now, can you draw from that place, the turn line? Can you draw from that place? This point? Yes. Let me. I don't let's take Can this, you... uh, Let's take this uh, last resistance here. Um, support here. This last support. Can you draw from that place? This last. No, support, not yeah. that one. The last one before that one. This one. This one. <laughs> From... Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yes. You can uh, draw. Yeah. Yes. You can draw from this point. Yes. You can draw okay. your trend line from here. Yeah. You can draw from here. If... But you can only okay. draw from here when this support <laughs> is significant. Remember, it's still forming. This support here. It's still forming okay so when it forms and go up that's when you can actually connect here like this how, how do we know when support is significant or not? when it's significant is when it has gone up and leave the level when it has gone up and leave the level is like, okay the support has fully formed you can't just take somewhere as support when it's still forming just like this market was going down you just take your mm -hmm. support it must show a bullish move to the upside before you can define here to be a support but this is support and you can place this line here as your trend line oh. okay all right so next question thank you so much no problem hello good evening sir no problem right, good yeah evening. good evening good evening sir 
Yeah. Um, so what I want to understand here is um, in trading the Bitcoin. Okay. As in buying. When the when the when the on the charts when the trend is going down. Is that when you trigger a buy? And when it's going up, is that when you trigger a sell? Now, when the chart is going up, it means the price of Bitcoin is increasing. Okay. So, when the price is going up, like in this case, this very level, this is a good point to buy because it's still low. So, when it increases, you can sell here because from difference between year and year, it's your profit. Now, when it's at a top year, it's not advisable for you to buy it because price has been moving right way up. Where were you when price was moving from here up to this point? So if you are buying here, you're actually buying late. That's where some okay. person that bought Bitcoin here, they're already in loss because yes. price have dropped going down. against them going down. So what you do is with your analysis, you have to be very proficient in technical analysis. And I have put together courses that can help you for that, which will be released on Fri Friday, Saturday next week. So at this point, is a good time to buy Bitcoin. Why? Because price have dropped significantly. So it means it will go up before it will now come back down. If this trend should be a downward trend. What do I understand? Sir. Okay. So you buy, yes, you buy low when the price is low and sell when it's high. Yes, yeah. Any other question? Thank you. Any other Hello, question? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You're welcome. So I'm on, I'm on the application now so i'm seeing something like set spot or margin can you please explain that okay now spot trading that you can see here um where is that spot trading is just like when you buy something from the market and you allow it to to appreciate that are spots that you can see here you see fiat and spot let's say you buy bitcoin you allow it to appreciate now margin in margin trading, just like forex trading, if price is going up and you buy, you are in profit. If price is coming down and you sell, you are in profit. So margin goes two ways. Spot is only one way. But in margin, you must be in the direction of the market. That means if you take a sell here, that is we call a short position in margin trading. If you short BTC from here down here, you should be in massive profit because you sell Bitcoin and buy it back at a lower price. That's what it means. You sell Bitcoin here and buy it back at a lower price. So the difference is your profit. So that's what we call margin trading. Now, spot, if the Bitcoin price is going down, you are losing the value of your Bitcoin. Hello? Do you get what I'm trying to explain? I'm following you. I'm following you. Okay, so, so spot trading means you buy allow it to appreciate you make profit if it goes down you lose margin trading if you say it will go up it went up you are in profit if it goes down you lose margin trading if you say it will go down and it goes down you are in profit if it goes up you lose so, so which one do you advise now for beginner for, traders for beginner, for trader. beginner trader stick to your spot trading first margin trading can be very difficult and it needs you know high level of experience that's just the truth you need high level of experience. it can also be very very profitable okay but you need higher experience the same thing to features it works the same way as you know margin trading i believe All i right, thank you answer your question okay um next question please good evening sir. Good evening. evening evening continue, continue. Uh, sir i want to ask question about I saw some coins that they will have like times 10, times 5, times 3 in front of them. So I just want to know the meaning of them. So. Okay, now the times, all the times you are seeing is what you call leverage in trading. Now, if I switch back to margin trading, you will see some coin that will have um, 10x, you see 5x, and all that. What it means is that you are borrowing some certain amounts. That's what it means. You are borrowing certain amount for, for you to enter that trade. That means you are trading on margin. You are leveraging. You are borrowing money. 
and the money you are borrowing is times x so that if you are you uh, market move in your favor let's say 100 percent times 3 if you're using 3x if you're using 100x it means if market move in your favor 50 percent times 100 that's why how your profit will be as well but in spot trading like i explained earlier it's not like that you only get if market move 100 percent that's if bitcoin appreciate 100 percent you just get 100 percent flat but someone that was doing margin trading and is uses 3x the person will have 3x that's three times 100 percent of what bitcoin in crystal that that's what it means let me um, come back to advance here. I don't know if you understand what I, what I just explained now. Hello? Yes. And yes, the X you are seeing here, the X you are seeing here is margin. So this, you can trade this on margin and we have this one now have 10X. That is the maximum leverage you can take is 10X, 10 times your amount that means if you are dropping you know ten dollars to occupy this position your broker can give you extra ten that's times ten times ten that's hundred that's what it means the same thing remember margin trading work against you as well for you that's if the market is going against you it can be very detrimental that's why i said it's for advanced traders if the market is going in your favor you'll be very happy like you'll be very very happy because you will see the money as in dropping down in your account drastically and it's also sweet now for those of you guys that already know how to trade forex is you can trade you know on margin here as well so i believe i've answered your question uh, another question no good evening sir good yes evening. thank you sir good evening. good evening yeah i when you are placing a limit order okay or how do you put a uh, stop limit or stop loss while you are placing a limit order? While you are placing the limit order, how will you put your what? Stop limit or what? Yes. Your stop loss. Okay. Now, if you want to place a stop loss together with a limit order, you use your stop limit so that you can place a limit and have a stop. You can place a limit. Let's say, for example, you want to buy Bitcoin. You can say at this price is where you want to buy Bitcoin. But at the stop price is where you are saying if Bitcoin continues down after buying at this price, I'm no longer interested. Sell my Bitcoin back to USDT. That's what you are saying. So at this point, you are buying Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin move to this price, that's the price you will feel here. It will automatically sell your Bitcoin back to USDT because at this point, it's your invalidation point that, we, that I talk about. At this point, you are saying Bitcoin will further depreciate. And so, therefore, if it depreciates, you will lose more. So, therefore, at this point, which is the stop price, I don't want to lose again. Convert my Bitcoin back to USDT for me. And USDT is a stable coin, which means if Bitcoin like it should crash, USDT is still the same. Have I answered your question? Okay. But I want to also ask, can you also, because, you know, somebody like me, I don't like watching charts too much. Okay. Now, <laughs> can you place your limit order with, just like, I'm a forex trader, I trade forex. Okay. Your uh, sell order, that's your tip for it in forex. Okay. Can you place the three at the same time? Uh, no, no, no. You, you, know, you know, in FX, in FX, we have, we have buy buy limit sell limit buy stop sell stop okay now that one is different in 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 crypto where you you set your buy stop you say your stop loss and you set your tp you get it hello i hope you have hope you're hearing me you set your limit order let's say limit sell you set your stop loss and you set a tp in crypto it's not like that it's different you can't set these three things but the most important thing you can do is using the stop limit where you can buy and if price is going still against you from your buying point you can set it back <coughs> or you just buy at the limit order and allow price to do whatever it wants to do or you watch it 
So it's different from, from FX where you have, you know, buy stop, buy limit, sell stop, sell limit, and all that where you set your, you know, various TP and SL. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. I can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, I've been following from the beginning. Okay. Okay. Yes. For example, you're on the spot. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you bought you bought at the very good points. It went in your favor. Okay. It rose up. At the end of the day, market started dropping like the current situation. Okay. What's the safest thing to do? The safest thing to do. Thank you for that question. I, I love you. What, what was your name? Come on, you know, my name is Alex. Alex, okay. The safest thing to do is that um, you you should you know use your stop limit or you use a limit order. Now let's say okay, let's say for example you buy here, market starts going up, market starts going up, market starts going up. What you do in this case, use your stop limit. Remember, if you set buy like a stop limit say, and you set it below, it will just execute without you saying anything because you are selling at a lower price okay now another thing you can do is that if since price is moving up up you can as well set a limit say higher so that if price moves to that point it will execute you can as well trail as the price is going up you can be shifting you know your price up using stop limit two things i've explained now you can use stop limit to trade your price, like as it's moving up, you are shifting your stop limit to, you know, as it's moving up, you shift your stop limit. Or you place a limit set above where price is. Like, like in this case, you can place a stop limit to sell here. Yeah. So that when price moves to this point, it will sell. Or as price starts moving up, you, you know, be pushing your stop limit. Close to it, close to it, so that if it eventually drops, it will just sell for you and you won't, you know, be in loss. So, two things you do there. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. And also, for those that do not want to trade, you don't want to trade, like now you buy Etrom. Etrom rose up to a particular level before it started dropping. Okay. Yes. So, those that will not have time to be checking all the time, whether to trade or to put stop loss or to put a stop limit, buy stop, and the like, what do you also suggest? Okay, what you can do in that case is you'll be an investor. Investors, you okay. invest in the cryptocurrency space where you leave the market, you buy a particular coin. You allow it to stay there. Maybe you're looking at you leaving it for three months, six months, one year, five years. That's what you do so that you don't bother about looking at the chart. You can buy your coin and leave it for, you know, months without looking at it. So that's that's what you do if you don't want to, you know, be looking at your chart up and down. You be an investor. You put in your money, buy low, buy very low. Look at an underlying asset that is at a very low point. You buy and leave it. After some months, some weeks, just be checking it without, you know, looking at your chart, bothering you with a whole lot of analysis and all that. Yes, another question, please. Okay. You you talked about how to deposit. You never talked how to withdraw. Okay, how to withdraw is very simple. You can just go here. For example, if you want to withdraw um, USDT, I can just go to withdraw. <coughs> can just go to withdraw now if i want to withdraw fiat i don't have fiat anymore can put click on fiat since it's crypto i can put some crypto i have um, usdt in my balance so i can use tether here then i have this balance here what i would do is i will the person that want that want to receive i will take the address and paste it here now one thing you have to do is you have to select the network you ask the person which network if it is TRX, remember TRX has zero fee. If it is Theta, which is the I'm common, the which is the common one, is eight dollars fee. You see other fees here. So you basically have to define the network for the address. You choose 
the network but most times it's always theta network then you put the amount in this case i can put maximum and then i have to put the address that is receiving this amount of theta and then this button will be active i click on submit and and that's that's all i have withdrawn my you know usdt the same thing happened to naira the same process when you want to withdraw any coin at all in or on this platform it's very simple when you want to withdraw so it's possible to withdraw your crypto into naira and no. naira to your bank you have to convert it first let's say convert, you have to, naira. Bitcoin, yeah, convert to naira yeah. and then send it to your yeah, bank naira. yeah so Binance gives opportunity to transfer to the bank they will credit your bank account they have to credit your bank account within you know few minutes your bank account will be credited okay that's yeah. fantastic yeah just, well, just, just like i deposited and it reflects the same way when you withdraw it will also reflect in your bank account direct it's what i've been doing if i don't know whether i can show you my history here i've done a whole lot of transactions if you check okay. my if you check my transaction history where is that if you check my transaction history you see successful 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 so okay. I've, I've done a lot of transactions with this very method i've done a lot of transactions so 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 that's that okay the next person please we have just hello sir three more questions hello, yeah. good i'm with you go ahead yeah um you talked about uh trailing your your uh, profit using stop loss okay so um how can you be able to achieve that that where you are making a profit and you want that profit you don't want that profit to go below, to go below that point so you put a stop loss like a benchmark i get it so as it going is going up you keep putting a benchmark okay so at the end of the day anytime the, the market um, reverse market decide to reverse you will see them profit no matter what yeah so how can you be able to achieve that that's what i'm saying you use your stop limits use your stop limit to do that the limit is where the stop is where it will take you out so let's say i have um i have what here i have bitcoin here right <laughs> so i can say um if i want to set this bitcoin to usdt i can set a stop limit here 16 let me put it on 16 611 stop at 16 611 okay point zero zero then my limit should be something above this 16611 16 6 13 okay so i can as well okay this should be a sale sorry this should be a sale i want to sell my bitcoin so if it gets to that point although i'm not in profit yet but you automatically sell i want to sell at this point 16.5 57 bit but my stop should be sorry guys this is stop limit so my limit should be this is 16 um, i just want to be practical here that's why i'm using time to do this 16 6 3 8 then my limit my stop is 16 570 16 570 point zero zero so if i if i click on sell it will give you this you confirm it and my order is placed now what happened is if bitcoin comes to this point it will automatically sell now in your own case that you want to buy when you bought bitcoin let's say you use this 
kind of order and it doesn't hit your stop loss and you bought bitcoin bitcoin start going up what you do is you start adjusting this order i don't know where you are you are getting me you start yeah, adjusting getting... yes you start as price move up you start adjusting this price this limit and stop order as price goes up you adjust it gradually gradually remember you must adjust in such a way that if price goes up a little bit it will not just take you out because not all price fluctuation means that the price is going to go right down some are just minor retracement just like what happened in this case price just go down a little bit and still move up so you have yeah. to be very strategic as a technical analyst and then place it strategically in line as the market moves to the upside by so doing you will be securing your profits as the market moves up so in case the market reverse it will reverse and once it hit your stop it automatically set it back to USDT and you'll be safe and you see collect you know some profit that you have that's how you do that okay so, so that means the line can be adjusted using uh, what even what the market has already executed it can still be mo still move that do, that stop loss line yes you can move it as as you, as you can see here if you can look at here it's not executed yet because price have not come to that point now if price okay. come to this point and it hit my limit <laughs> order that is the limit price yeah. it will it will execute my my bitcoin it 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 will send my bitcoin out for me to set it up mm. yes so what you do in the case of buy in the case of buy and you use stop limit the limit price is the price at which you buy once price come to that limit you buy now if price does not hit the stop it won't sell back to USDT. it means if price move up your bitcoin appreciates you can as well shift your stop that's your stop limit now shift it in line okay. as price move up that's what you do okay. yes it's very it's very simple it's very simple okay. so Thank in you. this case i will cancel it because price have not come to that level and i don't want to sell my bitcoin okay the, the, i, I have last, a second question the last question okay you go ahead fast, yeah. uh, fast. i have more questions i have a question we draw one Dream we draw one you said you talked about network the theta network and those other networks okay um and it, i was seeing a fee of eight dollars eight oh, yeah. dollar eight point something dollars as in a network fee okay so is there a way that we can maneuver those fees to be able to withdraw <laughs> to okay to... turn your naira to what be fast yeah to sell our btc to naira so that we can be able to withdraw to our bank account yes naira. now you can let's say for example you have theta you can convert theta to naira convert naira to theta and sell it to your bank account it's very simple it's Without very simple much now, fees. yes you can as well change the network to tr20 trc20 has zero fee but the person you are sending the usdt to must send you a trc20 address if you say another address that is like ERC20, you've lost your coin. It's just like when someone sends you a Ethereum address to send Bitcoin to, you've lost your coin. So if yeah. you are choosing a particular address, that person you are sending to must give you that particular address for that network that you choose. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The last question. I have please. question. I have question, please. Okay. Be fast. Be fast. Yes. Yes. You have been mentioning USDT. USDT. As a stable coin using it as a peer against the BTC. Uh, are you saying that yes, USDT is a stable coin? Yes. Are you saying that there's no other type of uh, we have coin others, that we can use? We have other stable I coin like much. BUSD is a stable coin. TUSD is a stable coin. TUSD is a stable coin. USDC is a stable coin. So whatever are, USD stablecoin. They are all here. See, they are BUSD, B, USDT stablecoin, BUSD stablecoin, okay. TUSD stablecoin, USDC is a stablecoin, PAX is a stablecoin. These are all stablecoins. This one I mentioned now is also all stablecoin. Okay. Do you also is BNB a stablecoin? BNB is not a stablecoin. It's just a Binance coin for the exchange. Thank you very much. Another question, please.
the final question for this section. Is it a good time to buy Ethereum? Can okay. we take the chat? Is it a good time to buy Ethereum? You want to buy Ethereum now? Yes. I do you want to use my analysis. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. R right now is you can buy Ethereum right now. Yeah. You can buy Ethereum because it's it's actually low here. It's a good time to buy. It's a good time to buy Ethereum. It's a good time. But what you must understand is, from what I'm seeing here, it has formed. If this candle, you should buy Ethereum. If this candle close above this bearish candle. Buy Ethereum if this candle, this candle is somehow close above this bearish candle. You can buy. Otherwise, don't buy. Because if you look at here, this was the close of this very particular support. And this support is lower. That is, it close lower than this. So this chart on the normal should still go down before it will ride off. But if it goes down, it won't go down that far. But Look at this candlestick. If it close above this, this these are critical technical analysis. If it close above this, buy buy Ethereum. If it does not, don't. Let's wait for the next candle to form a close as well. What time frame is that? This one. This H four. This H four. This H four. Are you seeing it? Okay. Thank all you. All right. Sir. All right. Last question. Last question. Last question. Anyone? Okay, so thank you very much, guys, for being part of the training. I really, really appreciate it. Now, if you've not registered, check the description. If you're watching on YouTube, you will see my link, register, and get 20% off commission. And then the description also have, you know, a link to the general WhatsApp group where I post free signals. Also, ensure anyone on the on this particular training ensure you subscribe to our youtube channel this video is recorded and you can watch it over and over again and ensure you don't just you know take this knowledge for granted ensure you practice and you will do well now by next week friday saturday i'll be releasing a complete guide to cryptocurrency which you can you know pay for it and be guided from beginning to the end not only that you'll be given a vip signal where you will you know profit in the market immediately through my own signal with my own analysis so thank you very much guys for participating in tonight class tomorrow the same time we are here on zoom you know giving out knowledge for free so ensure you are here ensure you invite your friends if you have any other question go to the whatsapp group and ask your question and i will answer them accordingly so thank you very much for being on board thank you so much thank you